the Ola part of it uh, so far. So uh, we will talk about what problems are we going to solve uh, uh, today. Uh, we'll talk about the Internet of Things. We'll talk about a lot of stories and uh, look at how technology is helping these stories uh, to resolve itself to uh, you know, solve the problems. All right. So to begin with, uh, I would like to tell a story about a small issue that happened in Barcelona way back in the 1960s. So uh, during this period, there was a big outbreak of uh, asthma. You know? So people were having a lot of breathing uh, problems, respiratory problems. And it happened regularly over a period of many months. And this created a lot of casualties and fatalities uh, medically in that uh, city. So everybody started looking at the obvious problems, uh, traffic, uh, automobiles, industries, and see whether these are uh, the problems that are causing uh, the outbreak of asthma. But it didn't stop there. The asthma cases continued to increase. So the government put some uh, wise men together, uh, doctors and researchers, and asked them to you know, sit and uh, solve the problem. So they started piecing together all the events that were happening during that period of time. And over a period of six years, they made a study. And finally, they came to this conclusion that at the time of these asthma outbreaks, there were ships which were coming to the harbor, to the ports, and unloading soya beans. So the soya beans, when they were being unloaded at the docks, there was this dust coming from the soya bean being unloaded. And because of the wind, it went into the mainland and the soya bean dust triggered asthma. And the solution was very simple. They just installed filters during the unloading process and the problem was solved. So no more asthma outbreaks. So if you look at the whole time span, it took six years for the problem to be understood and identified, and then it took one day to solve the problem. So if you look at it from a technology perspective, six years is a very long time uh, to identify the problem. And this is what we can solve using IoT going forward. Another story, uh, in West Virginia, uh, the coal, coal mines of West Virginia, way back uh, in the early 1900s, there were, again, uh, quite a few uh, casualties. Uh, people were falling sick, they were having uh, breathing uh, problems. And then again, uh, when uh, people started dying uh, regularly, they started understanding that there's a bigger problem. So they started again researching. Over a period of 20 years, they made a research and then understood that the problem was coming from the fine coal dust that was generated because of the new machinery that was used to drill for uh, coal. And this was going into the lungs and causing what was called as the black lung disease. And then swiftly the government moved in, established some regulatory practices, and we had a 90% drop in fatalities within the next uh, couple of years. Again, if you look at the whole time span, it took 20 years to identify the problem and just maybe a couple of years to fix it. So medicine. So if you look at medicine, uh, medicine is what uh, doctors administer to you or you take uh, yourself. Uh, but medicine has a very uh, dangerous property that it has to be maintained at a certain temperature. And if the temperature goes above a certain level, the properties of the medicine uh, get spoiled and it is dangerous for your health. So imagine uh, medicine being manufactured in one city and then transported using uh, trucks to another city in a refrigerated container. If the refrigerated container breaks down, and the temperature goes up, 
and after some time somebody fixes the refrigeration and the temperature goes back down again you never know that this has happened when you take those medicines because the medicines might have got spoiled and the properties would have changed and this is a very dangerous uh, you know uh, thingy so how do you actually detect whether the medicine has been kept in a controlled temperature from the time it was manufactured to the time it has been used by the consumer so this is something again uh, where technology can intervene and uh, work so this is what we typically call as the snowball effect a problem which is very tiny and uh, happened uh, 30 days ago slowly starts to become a very big problem it festers into a giant uh, snowball which can have disastrous uh, consequences and this is something which is very expensive to solve once it has become such a big mess and therefore time is of the the most important essence when dealing with uh, solving problems so so what do we have here so as part of uh, bosch uh, we have uh, this philosophy that there is technology uh, there is connectivity there is hardware there is software and it is not the right way to go about solving a problem by looking at the technology and creating wonderful devices so it's very important that when you look at uh, the internet of things it's not about the technology at all it's about how you analyze the problem and come up with the right uh, solution so iot is again uh, an enabler and it's very important to look at uh, how do you solve the problems in the first place so we have uh, introduced this in uh, our uh, manufacturing plants and as our ceo has mentioned if we are able to connect all our manufacturing processes we are able to get close to 30% improvement in our uh, output and this has the potential to become a great money earner and saver if you consider the number of plants that we have you know worldwide so if you look at a uh, simple uh, uh, beer bottle what is very uh, exciting about this bottle is the way it is designed so the designers spend millions of uh, dollars trying to get the perfect neck of the bottle so it is a very great uh, thing to have uh, in uh, beer but if you look at it from a manufacturing process the bottleneck is the most dangerous element when you are trying to address a process because you can design a very fabulous equipment which manufactures products by the ton but you could have a very slow process which is limiting the use of these uh, products so you are creating a bottleneck so as a philosophy it is very important that you create an end to end approach where the bottlenecks are resolved first and then you look at the entire uh, solution out there so if you see this uh, formula that is at the bottom so you have you are putting materials and machines and manpower uh, into making a product and the output of this is products and scrap right so it is very important to look at each topic and make sure it is uh, productive and a saver to the company another example of uh, the internet of things is how bosch has helped increase football viewership by designing the automatic lawn mower so you no longer have to be out there uh, moving the lawn because the automatic lawn mower is uh, iot enabled it knows uh, where to cut the grass it knows how much to cut the grass and once the battery is uh, drained out it can go back and recharge itself and come and continue from where it left off so you have a lot of time on your hand uh, to watch that football game and so you're you know having more uh, precious uh, sports time so all put together we have uh, bosch which makes a lot of uh, products so it's a things company so we have uh, products like uh, the e call for emergency response and the transport data logger so the blue thingy on the top corner is a device which you can put on the medicine package uh, when it is being transported 
and it will tell you the temperature that the package has gone through its entire journey. So when it comes to the end game, you can look at whether the temperature has uh, gone up or low, and then accordingly take a decision whether to discard the medicine package because it is heated up or to continue to use. So therefore, you are saving yourself from further uh, problems. So that's what we have in the Bosch uh, IoT ecosystem. We have devices, we have the middleware, we have uh, the tools, the rules engines, the process engines, and then the applications uh, on the cloud that will help you to build a better uh, product. And with this, I will pass on the stage to my good friend Benjamin, who will uh, talk to you about the devices that can be used to make all these problems uh, go away and create uh, great solutions. Big hand to Thank you. <laughs> nice job. Yeah, good one. Let's see, where can I put this water? Okay, so it's, we've been here for five hours. Is everybody having a good time at least? Yeah? Awesome. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about what we're doing today here at Campus Party. Um, let's see, I could give you guys an exact agenda. So everywhere that I travel and everywhere that I go, we get a lot of questions about who is Bosch and what are they doing in technology. I think most people know us as more of a manufacturing and automotive company. And so people get really surprised to find out how deeply you're involved in connectivity and IoT and all these really cool topics. So I'll talk a little bit about what we're doing and how we're doing it. Talk a little bit about XDK. So a real quick show of hands. Who's been by the Bosch booth on the other side? So you guys probably saw the, the little device that we're working with. So we're going to talk a little bit about what that is and how it works and do a little bit of demo. And then finally, we had a couple of really cool hackathons that were sponsored by Bosch not too long ago. Um, so we're going to go through a couple of real world use cases, how the um, use cases were executed and what they used to do it. And then what we'll do is do a little bit of Q&A afterwards. Is that OK? Good. OK. All right, so Bosch Connected Devices and Solutions. You might hear me refer to it as BCDS as we go along, because it's a little bit shorter. Essentially, what we are is the IoT device arm of the bigger Bosch group. And so we were founded in 2013 essentially to do a couple things. So the first thing that we were designed to do was help get all of Bosch's groups sort of connected, get their IoT ready. And this is a lot of different things. So this could be our consumer electronics. This could be everything from you know, lawnmowers, power tools, all the way to our manufacturing facilities. Then the other side of that was to be able to take these products then to market through different B2B channels. So we help get Bosch connected. We have about 200 employees worldwide. So we're headquartered in Reutlingen, Germany, which is just a little bit south of Stuttgart, so southern Germany. Um, we have offices in China. Our North American headquarters is in Chicago, Illinois, in the U.S. Um, so we're doing business at uh, a global scale. So really exciting stuff. Sense, think, connect, and act. So these are really the four pillars of what our business is built on. So the core of our business really, though, is sensing. We really come from a sensing side. And that's really from our automotive heritage. So does everybody know what the term or understand what MEMS sensors are? So microelectrical mechanical systems are these really small micro sensors, essentially. And so they really started out in automotive back in the 90s. And then in the 2000s, we saw a lot of these really small sensors end up in consumer electronics like iPhones and iPads, smartphones. And then as the Internet of Things started to evolve and grow and all these different verticals started to appear, we started seeing these little small microsensors popping up then in all of these devices. Then the thinking side, so Bosch does a lot of things really well. And one of the things we do well is engineering software, embedded systems, really complex algorithms. So that's a big part of our business is making the devices smart. And then from there, connecting. 
So the Internet of Things is about working with lots of different things and devices and systems. And so we have uh, designed all of our devices to be wireless. We're really excited about uh, real common technologies like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, of course, and Zigbee. But then there's all sorts of really cool emerging protocols like LoRa, so wide, hour, uh, wide area, low power networks. So we're exploring lots of different connectivity and then acting. So this is the big part of IoT and connectivity is getting something to happen once you have all of this stuff. So it's not good enough just to know that there's just data and there's these things here, but then being able to do something with it, whether that's turning a motor on and off, generating notifications, creating action, light bulbs turning on and off. So that's really uh, the last part of what our business is built on. And where do we do it? So we have a couple different key domains. Of course, smart home and building is a really big market, huge in the US, huge in Canada, it's sort of evolving in Europe. Um, big in Asia. So we're definitely focused on smart home and building, connected industry and logistics, and then mobility, so connected car type topics. So the Bosch XDK, so cross-domain development kit. So as I mentioned, we were sort of founded to help get a lot of the different areas of Bosch connected. And so we needed a tool to help make that happen. And we designed this product really to use internally within Bosch. So we've had this device kind of going through rotation through all of the different business divisions, helping get us connected. And then just this year in the US, we said, you know what? We should bring this to market and you know, kind of share this with a broader community. So we actually launched XDK at CES this year. And we've sort of been ramping up and building up. But this is the first time that we've had a chance to bring this to Mexico. So we're really excited to present this to you. And I figured probably the best way to do that um, is to do that with a video. I like visuals. So if we could go ahead and start the video, and uh, we'll kind of take over after that. How do you take an ordinary device and enable it to sense its environment, make it connected, make it smarter? At Bosch, our answer is the XDK, a fully integrated hardware and software development platform that can give you the data you need to build your better device, better product, better machine. The XDK is an easy to use turnkey development kit that's designed to quickly connect your machine or device prototype to the Internet of Things. With the XDK, you have hardware covering eight internal sensing parameters along with a full software platform for fast programming and configuration of your proof of concept. Cool. Even users with minimal programming background can pick up the XDK and start using it quickly, leveraging our simple APIs and libraries to make your idea come to life. And by harnessing the Internet of Things, the XDK gives you the power to monitor and control your product remotely over Bluetooth or a wireless network giving you 24-7 access to data. At Bosch, we've committed months of testing of the XDK to ensure accuracy and reliability. With the XDK, you're getting technology that's not only groundbreaking, but also built with the precision and quality that you can expect from Bosch. Most importantly, the XDK gives you a faster path to product launch. On average, six months of design work can be eliminated, including the dreaded first pass of hardware. With the XDK from Bosch, you'll have a cost-effective development tool that will save you time and money, giving you a competitive edge in your product development. Now we just gotta get up there. Contact Bosch Connected Devices and Solutions today for more information on how the XDK can help you move your device, product, or machine from prototype to mass production. Cool. So that's our video. So we made that just to make it easy to show everybody a little bit about what we do. And I don't know if you can see it that well up here. We're actually going to be doing a little bit of a demo with it. So Alberto, get this connected. But what I thought we would do instead of talking about a product is tell a story. And I think it's something that maybe everybody could relate to. This is Michael. He's a tech entrepreneur. And he's an entrepreneur like a lot of all of us, like myself, a lot of you. And he has a problem. He gets eight hours of sleep, but he still wakes up really, really tired. So I don't know about you guys, but I run into this too. So Michael has a problem, and that's how a lot of great products start is with problem solving. And he started to think about what can I do 
to maybe improve on this. And he started to think I should trap my sleep, track my sleep to find out maybe what's going wrong. And maybe it's too bright. Maybe I need blinds. Maybe there's too much moonlight coming through my windows. Or maybe it's too cold. If he lives here, I don't think that's um, an issue, but it could be it's too cold. Maybe it's too loud, that's the other thing. If there's too much noise in the background, it's really hard to fall asleep and get all of the sleep that you need. So he's thinking about all these different things, or maybe it's something else. But he needs something to solve this with, and so he turns to a product like the Bosch XDK, something that is all packaged together, something that he could kind of run through a lot of these proof of concepts with, something to try to solve for all of these different problems. And so with a device like this, it's basically an all-in-one prototyping product for really any sensor-based IoT applications. It could also be used as a programmable sensor. So it's not just a dev kit. So there's a lot that's packed into this little box. So you have all sorts of different sensing parameters. So temperature, humidity, there's a gyro inside, there's an accelerometer rechargeable battery, all sorts of wireless connectivity, so you have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built in. There's an SD card slot as well, so you really have everything, in the, again, it's about the size of a matchbox. So really small, compact device, everything that you need. So Michael starts to think, okay, I don't need all of these things, but I do need a few things to solve this problem. And what he's gonna do is he's probably gonna create a type of alarm clock to solve for this, something that's connected, that has all of these different sensors in it. So what he decided to do was he chose to have a humidity sensor, pressure sensor, temperature. There's an acoustic sensor in there, a microphone to listen for the noise, and then a digital light sensor. So he's going to use all these different things to try to figure out what's going on. So he'll use the Bluetooth connectivity to talk wirelessly to his prototype alarm clock, and then he'll use the Wi-Fi connection to get all that data out and be able to manipulate it and store it in the cloud do other types of stuff in the cloud. And then the working process. So what he's able to do is start building that product fast and easy. And if you start looking at what is available out there to help get a prototype made, a lot of times you're sourcing parts and pieces from all over the internet, all sorts of different shops. Um, we've had feedback that sometimes it takes up to a month or a month plus to really get your prototype up and running, get things figured out. And we wanted to design something that you could get started with and have it up and running within an hour. So really quick, really easy to get started. The ability to try different things is also really important. By having everything you need at your disposal, you'll find really quickly what works and what doesn't work. There's an add-on board as well, so if the sensors and what's already included isn't what works for you, you could continue to add on different sensors, um, different communication modules, let's say like cellular. So you're able to try a bunch of different things. Then you could get your first prototype up and working, so you can move on to that next step, which is the proof of concept. And if you're dealing with investors and if you're an entrepreneur, they don't want to just see that you have a prototype, they want to make sure that it works. So it's really easy to get your proof of concept going. And then from there, to be able to bring it to market. So as I mentioned, when you open up the box, so in terms of hardware, you have everything that you need, including the sensor module, you have a mounting plate, the extension board that you would need, and then all of those eight sensors with the wireless connectivity. So in terms of hardware, everything that you need is there. But then once you plug it in and you really start to dive into the software, you have access then to all of the different APIs and everything that you need to program. So all eight sensors, the wireless modules, everything that you need for programming is right at your fingertips. Sample code, sample applications, so really everything. And then we give you access to this really robust, really big community. So it's great to be able to exchange your ideas and see what other people are doing. We run sometimes contests. It's a great interactive tool. So that's the other big part of it is the community that we have. So then Michael's dream. So everybody should have this connected alarm clock, right? But then the challenge is, how do I actually bring that to market? Um, is anybody here starting a business or working on product development at all? 
So a huge challenge that a lot of startups have is like the actual sourcing part of it, right? So you build this prototype, you have your dev kit, but then what? You need to find a place to get the sensors. Then you have to deal with offshore manufacturing, and you have to be connected and speak the languages. You need to have the financing to do all of this. So there's a lot of different things that you need to actually get your product from prototype then to the market. And that's kind of exciting. That's where Bosch starts to come in, because again, there's a lot of things that we do that not a lot of people know. You know for example, on the financing end, if you're a startup, or even if you're an existing business, Bosch has a venture capital group. So we can help get you the financing that you need. We have over 220 manufacturing facilities around the world. So if you need product manufacturing, we could do that. If you just need a technology supplier, so MEM sensors is an example, these little sensors. We're the largest MEM sensor provider in the world. We produce, I think, five and a half million units a day. It's crazy. So we have all these different things to help you get that product to market a lot faster and a lot easier. But then there's a lot of those things, like the ease of it's really important, the simplicity, but then lowering the cost of this overall delivery. So those are some of the benefits of the XDK. And I just wanted to share a couple of use cases, actually, from our last hackathon that we had. So looking at some real-world applications, this was actually the winning group. So what they did was they took the XDK, and there was a stove. And basically, they created a smart stove or a smart appliance. So essentially what they were doing was using the temperature sensor to read out the temperature and then be able to set some thresholds around that. It sounds like a really simple application, right? It's just a temperature sensor. But then if you start thinking about all of the different business models and then what's possible after that, that's where it gets exciting. So being able to do things with the data, being able to connect that data to other types of connected products. Say if my uh, oven gets too hot, I don't just want a text or a notification. Maybe I have a Philips Hue light bulb. Now I want my light bulbs to turn on when it gets too hot. So you can start thinking about all these different things you can do by having this type of communication. Um, this one was really exciting. I think, uh, I mean, I would use this if my car had it, but smart glass. So glass that has the ability to auto tint. Some, you know, uh, bifocals have that. And so what this application was, was using the XDK, a lot of different parameters to adjust the tint on these you know, windows, the smart glass. And if you start thinking about all those different things, so one of those things is moving, movement. So the glass would lighten based on movement and acceleration. Then the other part of that is knowing where is this vehicle. Um, this was a US-based application. So in every state in the US, in every city, the tinting laws are different. So knowing which state you're in can also account for the proper level of tint. And then moving or not moving. If you're stationary, you're parked and your door is locked, let's get tint on full blast so nobody can see in. So it's sort of a theft uh, protection or deterrent. So really cool application. And then this one's a little bit more novel. Uh, it's, it's kind of funny. Um, we use the XDK, it's more of an I4.0 or connected industry application, but we essentially started monitoring the vibration patterns of a coffee machine. So, I mean, there's coffee machines here. I mean, think about what that's doing. So, once you start taking this data and analyzing it and looking at it, I could start to understand what type of vibration patterns are derived from espresso versus just a regular coffee. And then I could look at run times to see how long each one is running. So from there, I could figure out when I need to order which coffee beans and when, and completely automate that process. And then the other side of that is the maintenance aspect of it. Instead of calling maintenance to come fix a broken machine because I don't maintain my coffee machine, we know how long this machine is running for. So I can be proactive in my maintenance, lower that cost, keep my uptime, and have coffee all the time, whenever I want it. So if you guys have any other questions, um, feel free to see me. I'll be here all day tomorrow. But here's some info to get to the site, where to buy it, uh, how to connect with us. We're on Facebook, uh, excuse me, Facebook and Twitter. So we're on all the social media channels. So feel free to shout us out, ask us questions, anything that you need. And that was about it. So thank you.
Um, yeah. Anybody have any questions for us that we could pass this little thing around and then we could take some questions? Show of hands. Allá, allá tenemos uno. ¿Me pueden ayudar con un micrófono por allá? Ok. Hello. Hello. Uh, looking at all the futures and the sensors that the Bosch has already, it's similar to what an iPhone or a cell phone can do with all the sensors. Is there a way that we can take advantage of emulators or sensors of this phone and then move it up all the solutions to the Bosch, uh, to the XDK, sorry? Okay, your question was can you integrate the smartphone with an XDK basically? If I, or if you could use that instead of the XDK. And then move it to the XTK, exactly, okay. Yeah, um, absolutely, that's possible. Um, but you know, when you write applications on the phone, uh, you're usually using a JavaScript, maybe, or uh, a different language other than C, writing, let's say, in iOS. So you're going to have to do a lot of conversions to get down to uh, what the XTK understands. Okay, but it's possible, like, to migrate the application that was codified in for the iPhone or for the cell phone? Sure, just in terms of the sensor algorithm, yeah. perfectly um, fine. Uh, of course, there's no uh, you know, user interface if you have a complete application with one on a phone. Right. It'd be a little different, but it's absolutely possible to uh, use some of the same sensors that are on there, actually, or on the XDK. All right, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Any other questions? Raise your hand. Here, we could throw in. <laughs> de hecho, cualquier pregunta la podemos hacer en español sin ningún problema. Entonces, siéntanse con toda la confianza por allá, la, se la señorita. La señorita, excelente, gracias. Habla Ahora sí que háblale al dado. You can choose what kind of sensors has the... yeah. <laughs> O en español sin problema, adelante, no hay problema. La pregunta otra vez, por favor. Uh, you can choose what kind of sensors it has. Yeah, so the device itself, so it actually comes with all eight physical sensing parameters that we showed up there. So that's all sort of packed inside of this really small package. So you have just about everything that you would need for most IoT applications in any domain. So smart city, smart home, connected industry, really any of those. But if there is something that you needed, that wasn't included. Let's say you needed a remote temperature sensor, maybe with more accuracy. Maybe you were looking for an environmental sensor, something different. You could add that on using the extension board that we have. So you could add your own sensors for different types of applications. Uh, when, when comes the idea of designing the XDK? I'm sorry? When comes the idea of design the XDK? Who came up with the design, the idea? Yeah. Um, a bunch of engineers in Germany came up with the design and uh, the function, but a lot of it came out of necessity. So again, we had a lot of problems, similar problems that Michael had, you know, and we have 400 divisions across almost 400,000 employees. So we had a need and a lot of you know, these different divisions and these people were saying, well, we want this, we want this, we want this. We don't need this. And so we kind of had the company um, sort of have a lot of input with the design and the execution of the product. And like I mentioned, we use this internally for a lot of different applications. Bosch is its own biggest customer of this product, actually. So, um, so yeah, we had that input from a lot of different people. Había, había una pregunta más por acá. Por favor, si lo podemos aventar el dado. Con toda la fuerza, hasta acá. Gracias, gracias. Hola. Sí, se escucha, se escucha. Eh, bueno, eh, analizando, 
analizando todo el concepto de, del XDK, me pareció interesante todas las funciones que tiene, todos los sensores acumulados. Eh, yo aún soy estudiante y me interesó mucho. Sin embargo, existen muchas, muchas aplicaciones que en realidad no me serán útiles para X proyecto. A pesar de que sea un, un sistema muy complejo, ¿existe la posibilidad o algún modelo con menos sensores o alguno que se adapte más a tu proyecto? Ok, so, understanding the, the, all the functionalities of the XDK, it's very, very interesting. But is there any way that have any other sensor, any other turnkey sensor with less sensors depending on the application or even though in the vertical that you want to apply it or for the project specific that you want to apply it, is there something else there in the market yeah. coming from Bosch? So there's a couple different ways to answer that. So the first way is that you can just choose the sensors that you want to use. So you have access to all eight. It doesn't mean you actually have to use all eight. If you only need one or two of those different sensors, that's sort of what you pick for your project. But then, again, let's kind of go back to Michael in that scenario. He builds this product, he does this proof of concept, then he wants to scale. He wants to sell not one or two, but say a million of those. And he doesn't want all those other sensors. So that's when you're able to come back, whether that's to us or really any other manufacturing partner, and say, well, I only need a temp sensor and a humidity sensor, and then we can build a product based on the platform that you need and not give you a bunch of stuff that you don't need. ¿Te respondieron tu pregunta? Uh, well, I got it. But the question is, if I only need two of eight, uh, if I only need two of eight, why should I pay for the other six? Shouldn't be more profitable to, to buy something with only the, the two sensors I need? Yeah, I mean, that's a really good point. And it's not for everybody. So if you know going into a project, you only need two different sensors and that's all you'll need to do your prototype and then your proof of concept, then we might not be the right device for you. We typically are, again, when I mentioned that we're sort of available for different use cases across multiple applications. So it doesn't matter the type of domain or the vertical. Um, we designed this product to give you a lot of options. And the problem that we've seen with a lot of our customers prior to coming to Bosch and using this was that they would start to work on something with those two sensors, but then they're like, shoot, I need this sensor, or I need that sensor, and that delays the entire process. So um, that's why we decided to include everything in one bundle. Um, we don't have just um, one dev kit with uh, a single sensor or two sensors or anything like that. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank there's, you. there's another question coming from the Periscope. So uh, the question is, if this XDK sensor is a competency for or a competent uh, against uh, the GE Predix? So my response to that, is it a competitor? No. Does it have the ability to integrate with it? Yes. So it has the competence to uh, integrate with uh, GE Predix. Uh, if it uses MQTT or lightweight M2M, -M, we could connect to their uh, server, no problem. I don't see that GE has an actual piece of hardware to go along with that platform where it would be an actual competitor. Yeah, with the product, and maybe just to add on to that, um, we don't lock you into using just Bosch when you have this. We realize that, again, the Internet of Things is about connecting to lots of different stuff, different cloud platforms, different service providers. So we wanted to make it easy to connect to things like Predix or um, really like thing works or really anything else that's out there. Okay, the, and the next question also coming from the social media is, when or maybe how can I get these sensors, this XDK sensor in Mexico, and when are you distributing this sensor in Mexico? That's an awesome question. Um, it's a good problem to have. So today you could buy the product uh, by going to Mauser, M-O-U, S-E-R, mauser.com. So that's our current distributor. They ship across the world, so they ship everywhere. However, I mentioned earlier, we want to partner closer um, with the people in Guadalajara and all over Mexico. So we're working on setting up regional distribution here in Mexico. Hopefully we could have that for um, 
this region within the next four to five months. And this is a personal question. How much does it cost if I go to internet at this moment? It's 185. One, did you say 185? 185 US. So, más o menos, dos mil pesos, dos mil, dos mil doscientos pesos por tener ocho sensores y todo el XDK sensor, ¿es verdad? Yeah. Ok, muchas gracias. <laughs> ¿Alguna otra pregunta? Yo tengo una, a ver. Eh, comparado con las demás empresas que se dedican a esto, ¿qué tiene de diferente Bosch? And so XDK. Compared with the other companies that are also building some of, their, of these sensors, what is the value added from Bosch to this kind of sensor and also to, to bring the, to the market this sensor? Yeah, that's a really good question. So I think one of the first things that's really important to factor in is kind of like what we mentioned, you get everything that you need right away instead of having to source it from you know, whether that's the code or actual hardware, you get everything that you need when you open up the box. So again, we're talking an hour versus maybe weeks or months to actually get your product working. So, I mean, that's in of itself one huge advantage. But then it's being able to work with a partner like us. So once you actually get that product working and you have a proof of concept, then what? Again, that becomes the challenge. Where do I get funding from? Who makes the product? Who has experience doing this? And so we also offer that partnership to our customers as well, which is something rare and few and far between. So those are two of the really big things. Thank you so much. Uh, we have another question there. Sí, un poco de historia. ¿En qué año comenzaron a sacar este producto ya a la venta, no solo para que Bosch lo utilizara? ¿Y qué proyecciones esperan de venta en México? Okay. So when when did Bosch start to commercialize this sensor, this XDK sensor, what, when was it, the year? And the second part of the question it is, how, what is the volume that you're expecting from Mexico to send it or to distribute it in Mexico? Ooh, that's a really good question. So we launched the product, so we brought it out to the mass market in 2016 at CES back in January. So it's been on the market for just a couple months now. And that's been more of a uh, US Canadian focus. And then we also have distribution throughout Europe and Asia. Um, when you start looking at the volumes, this isn't really designed as a product where you sell lots and lots of these. It's not a high volume type product for us. Um, it's really a gateway to producing, again, a more scalable solution. In terms of estimated volume, um, based on the track that we're at right now, I would say about 3,000 to 5,000 units, probably on an annual basis. ¿Alguna otra más? ¿Alguna otra pregunta? ¿Social media? ¿Algo más? Por acá tenemos otra pregunta, por favor. Hello. Is there any kind of uh, software royalty that we need to pay after we just pass this development phase on the XDK, and we want we just trigger a, a real product? I wish I could say there was, I, you know, but no. Okay. <laughs> what you do with the product after we sell it to you is completely up to you. So you don't have to publish your code, you don't have to pay us anything. Okay. So you own that product, you own that development environment, you don't have to sign away your, your business or your life to us. And, and second question, uh, I don't know if, if you're using a proprietary MCU on the XDK, but it, if, if I just want to use that for development, I can just migrate all the libraries and everything to a different MCU and use it? Yes, you could. OK. Yes, you could do that. OK, OK. Thanks, Thank great you. question. Thank you. ¿Alguna otra pregunta más? Social media, ¿tenemos algo más de preguntas? No, nada. Excelente, pues nada más para recordarles, eh, justamente es el, tenemos una live demo preparada, desafortunadamente no se pudo proyectar, sin embargo la tenemos en el escenario IoT, los estamos invitando a todos a que pasen a visitarnos, tenemos eh, este sensor, tenemos algunos otros más que mostrarles y todos los productos adicionales de Bosch. Uh, Muchas gracias por su atención, and I just really want to say thank you so much to Ben, thank you so much to Dave, and thank you so much to Seth.
for, for this keynote. And thanks so much, everybody, for paying attention and, and your time. It's really valuable. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys.